Hello, everyone, and welcome to the real part one of the IoT ML Lab. So now we're actually going to finally dive into uh, the bank content. So we got through the introduction. We know what we're talking about, and I've already fired up the uh, glitch page here for the lab. And um, the links, again, are going to be in the description of this video if you um, didn't take them down from the introduction. Um, so we're going to go to uh, part one here. Um, and all these parts will, will always be here. They're not going to um, be taken down or anything like that. They might change if there's any fixes uh, or anything like that that has to happen, but you should always be able to access them from here. So we're going to dive into part one, um, which is going to be uh, pretty basic. It's going to be our introduction to view. So when we first go to the project page here, we've got a couple of options. So I think by default, it's just going to run uh, the app here in this window, and then there will be... Um, a dynamic render of the README. So you can either um, you know, expand that and, and read through the details here, or you can uh, go ahead and edit project, which is what we're gonna do, just because I, I prefer that environment a little bit better. Um, so if we dive in here, uh, by default, it should take us to the README uh, markdown file. So if you're jumping into any of these modules, uh, definitely start here. Um, there's going to be a very similar structure in the README here, but it's essentially trying to highlight what are the most important things that we're going to work with in this module um, and what are what are the biggest changes uh, from the last module. Since this is the first module, there really aren't uh, so many changes because this is the first time we're using this and we're pretty much starting from a template. Um, but in the modules uh, going forward, we will, we will have a lot more in, in that respect and there will be some code snippets as well. So for this one, like I said, we're just gonna scaffold our view application. We're gonna get up and running and make sure that we can um, work with the basics of view, pass data back and forth, stuff like that. So um, this is pretty much almost entirely a generic template. Um, so if you're wondering where a lot of these files are coming from, they're, they're just generic boilerplate that should come when you start a, a view project on Glitch or somewhere else. It should look very, very similar. Um, so for the most part, we will be working with the files that are in source. Um, the files that are in public, uh, you can see some of these are, are named kind of weird too. So these are going to be auto-built every time that we uh, make a change. So don't worry about these right here. Um, Index.html is, uh, is going to be a generic placeholder. So since we're using Vue.js, uh, which is a reactive framework, we're not really going to hard code anything into the HTML. Um, we're basically just going to point it to the output of build.js, um, which is, again, another dynamically uh, uh, built script. So don't go in there and you know try to change that or try and read it or anything like that. This isn't going to make too much sense. Um, this is going to be the output of our build um, when we make changes. And I'll talk a little bit about how that works now. So because Vue is a framework, um, we still need to ultimately transpile it down to something that browsers can run and read. So um, whatever we do in our .view files is fine and great, but um, we still need to compile it to JS, HTML, and CSS that uh, any old browser can read. Um, so we're using, we're doing that here in uh, package.json. So we're using some uh, utilities that just make a little bit more sense for Glitch and the front end that we're using. Um, we're using Browserify, which is basically just going to um, build our, our output and compile it to, to the static build.js file. Um, if you were to create a view project on your machine using the view CLI, um, you're probably not going to use this and this. I believe they just compile it with uh, Webpack and Bobble. Um, but nevertheless, um, the reason why I, I wanted to do it this way is that so we can still work with app.view files, um, and we're going to get a build process that looks, you know, as close to a traditional view project as possible. Um, because of that build, there are going to be a couple of funny things that we just have to deal with view. So, again, if you're running this project locally on your machine and it was started from the view CLI, every time you make a change to something, you know, whether it's a string or whether it's um, a style or anything like that, the... Um, templates should dynamically re-render and recompute compute um, because <clears throat> we're kind of going through this build middleware in Glitch. Um, we're actually going to have to manually force that rebuild, which is which is just a little bit annoying, but um, it's not a big deal. So we can do it a number of different ways. Basically, Glitch wants to sense a change in one of our core files, but the problem is that it doesn't recognize the .view files as core files um, because they're part of a framework, which is which is kind of layers itself on top of. Um, glitches normal runtime logic. So 
there's a couple of things we can do. Um, I, I typically just like to go into one of these files and make a um, kind of simple change like that. And you'll see once this pops up um, and this starts churning, it means that the build is happening. Um, and pretty much package.json server, and I think main.js, um, just doing a simple little, uh, you know, back and forth change will, will trigger the build. So um, you'll see me do it throughout the lab. That's why I'm doing it. Um, it's just a little bit, a little bit of funkiness. Um, and I guess I should also mention about uh, this server.js file here. So we're, because we're compiling to a uh, static HTML and JS, um, we still need to serve that somehow. So here we've just used Express at its, at its most basic implementation just to, to host the static app. Um, it, it's basically just hosting this HTML and JS file um, so that when you go to um, view this app, uh, like if I was to, you know, just go to its actual URL so that this thing that's being rendered here is is actually being able to be served and Express is the thing that's serving it. Um, so we really don't need to worry about that. That's just here, again, so we can serve it. It's not going to change. We're just going to keep it here. Um, same thing with package.json. It's just, it's going to be obviously defining our dependencies and some of our scripts, but we're not really going to worry about changing it. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this public folder. I'm going to leave package.json and server.js in the, you know, just as they are. And I'm going to start diving into the actual view stuff. So, like I said, a lot of this is templates. So this Bobble uh, ERC file that we're going to find still uh, preset template from just your standard view thing. Don't need to worry about it too much. Um, same thing with main.js. Yeah, can't speak. Same thing with main.js. It's just the entry point of our view app. Um, and here we're we're pointing view to the resources that it needs, obviously to the view package. Um, and we're saying that our main entry point for view files is app.view. And so what this is going to do is that it's going to basically look for this um, ID tag in our uh, public HTML, and that is where it's going to inject our entire view app. So if you look at index.jml, um, that HTML, there is a div here with the ID of app, and that's exactly what main.js is going to look for. So again, we don't need to worry about anything in this public folder, going to minimize it. This is our entry point. This is also really not going to change uh, for this lab unless we decide to use some plugins or stuff like that for view. But um, all in all, it's going to be the same. So long story short, everything in this folder is pretty much a generic template. And really, the, the only thing we're going to start worrying about right now is this app.view file. So let's dig into that. Um, in the introduction slideshow, which will be linked at the bottom of this video as well, um, we talked a little bit about Vue, and there were some links to the documentation to the to the uh, main page of Vue.js. So I highly encourage everybody to do just a little pass at the documentation um, before this, or maybe even in parallel to this workshop. Um, but it's going to teach you a lot of those specifics and fundamentals that we're going to go over now um, in a lot more detail than I'm going to go over now. Um, so right now I'm just going to go over it just enough so that you know what we're doing and what we're working with, but um, the details are, are really, really best found in the source documentation. So um, this is what a traditional view style uh, view file looks like, though. We've got our three main sections. We've got a template section, we have a script section, and we have a style section. So our template section is essentially holding HTML um, with dynamically bound properties that we'll talk in, about in a second. Our uh, script section is defining the, the view component, um, things like states, thing, things like functions, components, and we'll, we'll talk um, about those a little bit later. And the style tag basically just holds all your style. So whether it's CSS, uh, SAS, or something else, um, this is where we, we put it. And the idea is that this single file component starts to be its own entity. It, it pretty much has all the pieces of the puzzle in order to uh, be a piece of functionality, right? I mean, it's got the business logic, it's got the UI and it's got the styling on the UI, if you want to think about it that way. So that's a view file. Um, and it's going to be convenient for us in this, in this application just because we'll, we'll be able to keep everything in one place. And honestly, our, our code isn't really going to get too big anyway. So this, this is all kind of going to be coming from the same source and it will be, um, yeah, useful that way. So um, for this one, we're just going to dive into some very, very uh, basic view specifics, uh, namely props. So props are important. Props are the way that we have of uh, passing data between view components. So I'm gonna comment this out right now, just for the time being, um, or actually it looks like I deleted it, but um, there we go. All right, so now you'll notice that this won't um, 
this won't show what I just did because remember, um, it's not sensing the app file as, as a main change. So I'm just going to go here and, and um, just force it to rebuild really quick. Um, and in a second here, see it's waking up and now it's back to normal. And we can see that nothing is here. So empty right now. I'm going to go back to uh, the view app. So um, obviously, if this was, you know, your traditional hello world example and you did something um, you'd probably want to display a static message. So in this case, you know, I don't know, message. I'm going to force that rebuild again. It's kind of going to be not so fun in the initial uh, <laughs> uh, modules just because we're, we're going to do light changes frequently. But um, all right, so you can see that this is static and hard-coded. That's great. Um, but that's typically not what most websites and web apps are these days, right? We want dynamic stuff. We want interactivity. We want data to move back and forth. So we're probably never going to have this instance where we hard-code um, something because that would explode the amount of code we have to write and we have to account for a million scenarios rather than just dynamically passing things that we care about. So how does Vue help us solve that? Um, well, through props and data. Um, and data in the Vue context is going to be very familiar to you if you um, know anything about React hooks or have worked with React hooks in the past. Um, this is basically a local state on our component. Um, and the way that it's defined in view is like this. You, you create a data object on this uh, view class and the data object has to return a function. That's just, that's just the view paradigm. Um, they can explain it a little bit you know, better as to why that is and, and why that's um, useful. But for our purposes, we just need to know that the data object has to return a function. And then after that, all of these can be really whatever you want. Um, you know, I can call, I can create a new variable and it can be a number, maybe two, I don't know. It can be a string, it can be an array, all kinds of things. Um, and these are not just things that are gonna be hard typed. These are also things that we can um, access later on with methods and functions and all that stuff. We can reference these throughout our view components. So this is gonna be really, really useful. So you can see for this module that I've just created a very simple message um, thing. So it just says hello from view app. And if you remember our preview, um, you you probably can expect where it's going to show up. So right here, I've, I've turned on my H1 tag again, but um, you can see rather than hard coding my hello from view app, I've, I've done this thing. So um, this double curly brace syntax is one way that Vue has of injecting dynamic content to the DOM. Um, so basically what this is going to tell Vue is that we're, we're not passing in a string literal. We're passing a reference to an object that's going to exist somewhere in this component. And in our case, that happens to exist in um, this data object. It's, uh, here we go, message, message. That's what we're going to pull. So if I, again, rebuild this uh, very quickly, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think this should trigger the build. It will. Um, if I rebuild this, we can now see that this is going to refresh, and it's going to pull that message. So this is essentially how basic reactivity works. And um, it's fine and great in one component, but as we make our app bigger and we start to create more complex logic, these things are going to need to become layered. Um, and again, if you're familiar with other component-based architectures uh, like React or Angular or something like that, you probably already know that your app isn't going to be one component or two or five or even 10. You know, it, it's probably going to be a lot more than that, um, depending on your architecture. So this is the basics of how we we start pulling data from the view component but there's a lot more things that we're going to get into um, once we start creating new components and we start defining them here as you can kind of imagine by this uh you know little placeholder uh, we're going to use components throughout the the html template as well and we're going to need to pass data to those components so that is going to be what our next uh, module is really going to get into um, but for now these are just the view basics um, you can play around with this again, remix this if you'd like, um, and uh, see see what data can do for you, and see see the amount of functionality that you can get out just from this simple interaction. Um, so that's it for this module, and let's get into the second one.